G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists in Australia do what they do. Okay viewers, welcome back to Colour in Your Life. Well, we're at the studio of Linda McCauley today. Welcome to the show, Linda. Thank you, Graham. It's going to be a fantastic day. Now, I would describe Linda as the professor of paint <laughs> because you're one of those ladies that absolutely knows just about everything. I mean, you are one of the, uh, the leading uh, demonstrators for Matisse uh, in Australia as well. But when you sit down and actually talk to Linda about all of the different processes and all of the different mediums that you can use. I mean, there's some really fascinating stuff that I was completely unaware of myself. Even the translucencies and the transparencies that you put into your work, it's quite fantastic. But you've had a pretty impressive career. You're really a award-winning watercolour artist. Uh, came from Perth, moved to Melbourne, and literally you're a resident at, uh, at Uluru. Very much an Australian landscape artist, but also you put some really, really whimsical type pieces together, I think, on, on some of our beautiful Australian animals as well. But give me, a, give me an overall view of, of your view and who your career is. I'm really passionate about Australia and the colours in the landscape. Mm -hmm. And this is mainly because I spent 10 years painting in Western Australia, where you've got all those beautiful rich reds and turquoise colours. Yeah. And what I've tried to capture in my landscapes is the way the light transitions across the landscape. So okay. I've gone from watercolour, which produced a almost like a static painting, to wanting to produce something that's bigger and brighter. But we're going to paint a, a valley or a... a, a what, what would, what we're would you going call to paint Warper Gorge today, okay, which is based in Katajuja in Central Australia. Okay, and uh, um, once again using some of these principles as well uh, to develop the picture, but it's really quite fascinating. It's just to have, for somebody to have that much knowledge about how their medium actually works is just going to be a treat for everybody. So. Let's get this one out of the way and we'll start on that particular piece and go through for the day. But this is going to be a really interesting day. Terrific, looking forward to it. Okay. Thank you. I've already thinned these paints down a bit using acrylic painting medium. Okay. And you can see it's a little bit runny and I've do this so I can blend the paint really well. I always use house painting brushes when I'm doing my backgrounds. And when I was studying at TAFE, they used to call me the Formula One painter because I'd be out with the house painting brushes <laughs> and quite quickly. So I'm going to paint both this sky and the water at the same time. All right, okay. So I'll start with the white and I blend from the lightest colour to the darkest colour. And you're actually working off one of your reference photos for this today, aren't you? That's right, I'm working from one of the photos I've taken of Walper Gorge. Okay. And while I'm out there as well, I do small watercolours. Uh -huh. So I, one of the things that I think is really important as, as an artist is for you to work from your own source material and have some kind of personal connection to the work that you're doing. Uh -huh. And I'm using these just cheap brushes from Bunnings. I love these brushes. Yeah, but they're great for those broad strokes, aren't they? Oh, they're fantastic. Yeah. I've finished with this colour, so I'm just going to pop that in. Start, I'll start with the cerulean blue. And there's quite a strong tonal difference between the sky blue and the cerulean blue. So I'm going to have to spend a little bit more time blending that one. I'm going to stick a little bit of that in the water. Basically what I'm doing with the water is painting a mirror image of the sky uh -huh. as it goes. Got 
to keep wiping that excess paint off so I can blend. The last colour that I'm going to use is Cobalt Blue. Very striking colours, mate. Yeah, I love these strong colours. Very Australian. There's nothing like the blue yeah, that you see out in the desert. So that looks really streaky, but the next stage I do is a step I actually call polishing. Yeah. Whereas I let this dry to the point where it's almost dry but not quite, and then I'll go over it with a dry brush. Okay. And you call and it polishing, do you? And I call it polishing yeah. just because it flattens out the brush strokes. Okay and produces that really smooth effect that uh -huh. you'll see on my work. Yeah, because I was, I was wondering how you got those magnificent um, gradations, particularly in the skies, they're so smooth. Yeah, well I spend a lot of time painting my backgrounds. You get the skies that you get as well because they're so smooth in their approach is that you actually put a drying retarder in there so that you can get the smoothness of gradations. That's right, Graeme, the drying retarder slows down the drying of the acrylic paint and particularly because I do a lot of painting in Central Australia where it's quite hot, yeah. it's important to add that drying retarder to give me more time to paint. Sure. Okay, well if the sky looks fantastic as, as you've smoothed it out. Yeah, and see yeah. how that's smoothed it out yeah. with the dry brush. I'm just going to draw some guidelines. I don't do a lot of drawing. I actually prefer just to paint straight onto my canvas. But for this, I'm going to use my photo and just do an outline. A good way to draw quite accurately is to actually put your pencil over the photograph so you get a feel for the curve. Okay, so once that stage is done, now I'm just going to underpaint it mm -hmm. just to block out some of that blue so we know where the edges of this cliff is going to be. And it's just like a titanium white of some sort, is it? Yeah, it's yeah. just titanium white. So whenever I'm painting, whatever stage I'm at in my painting, I always try and get my brush strokes to follow the structure that I'm painting. So all I'm doing now is just getting back to a really nice white substrate because I'm going to paint like a watercolour from light to dark using transparent glazes over the top of this. So if I had the blue underneath, and then I put gold over the top of blue, I'd end up with grey. Sure. So I need to get it back to white. Okay, so I think that's ready for us to put the impasto over the top now. Oh, okay. Right, we'll just get this stuff out of the way and we get on to the exciting stuff using the impasto and the dry mediums. Fantastic. Okay, so now I'm going to start creating the structure, Graham. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use this impasto medium from Matisse. This is a great product because it's really flexible. Okay, they make a m number of products that have got, you know, various, you've got ferrous powders and different stones and rocks and sands. It's quite fascinating. Yeah, so what I'm going to use is the Matisse Dry Mediums range. And uh -huh. the great thing about the Dry Mediums range is a lot of it is Australian minerals, so you can incorporate that. Oh, yeah. You know, it makes it extra Australian. It's really cool. Which <laughs> I love. Yeah. And the other good thing about the dry mediums is it gives you a complete control over the product. So you mix it into whatever medium you like. So oh, okay. you can add it to your paint. You can add it with, like I'm going to do with Impasso. Mm -hmm. You can put it on the top to create a bit of interest. Mm -hmm. So today I'm going to be using Geraldton Crushed Garnet. So that's fascinating. So this is minerals from obviously Geraldton. And they must obviously heat treat these to get rid of bacteria and something or other, do they? That's right. Okay. So originally when I developed this idea, I thought I'd use the sands from Central Australia. Uh -huh. And there's a whole lot of reasons that you shouldn't use those. But one of the other reasons is, is because of the bacterial content. Okay. So this is sterile, you know, it's not going to introduce anything into your painting that could compromise it later on. And I'm also going to be using this Weeper Calcine Bauxite which has a really lovely tricolour texture. I'm going to mix it in with the impasto medium. Okay, I'm using a big palette knife now and I'm just going to add a little bit of that medium to it and it creates this really nice chunky texture. So now I'm going to find my photo and start creating the structure. So see as I drag that palette knife across, it picks up those little stones and creates those nice little textures in the rock. And once that medium's dry, they're, they're fixed in there. 
for good. Once, once that medium's dry, they're set in there for good. Yeah. This is one part of the painting that I'll actually spend a fair amount of time on. Uh -huh. Because I want to create the structure that the paint is going to run along. Yeah. From here, we, what do we go to the floor, do we? Yeah, so from here, <laughs> okay. now I'm going to lie this down and sprinkle the crushed garnet over the top. So I've created the little dents and pockets in the rocks using the impasto. Yep. I've added the weeper bauxite and then the final texturing is going to be with the crushed garnet. Okay. Okay, so now I'm just going to create a bit of a tool to help me sprinkle some of this crushed garnet. And it's, this is obviously done when it's wet, of course, so it stays in there. That's right, yeah. Graham. It's going to stick into the impasto. There you go, look at that. And you're really sort of creating the ridges with the gut crushed garnet as well. That's right. I'm trying to get that pattern. Oh, and you can see how it's starting to create that 3D effect now. And the good thing about using these mediums is when I'm finished this work, you see when they're exhibited in the galleries, you see people come along and they're just itching to touch them and see is that, you know, did she actually paint it like that? Is mm. it real? And you obviously don't mind people doing that either. No, I actually put a sign up when I'm exhibiting. Please feel free to touch the artwork. And that's left to dry. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to give it a, a coat of gesso over the top. Okay. And we can move on to the next stage. Sounds fantastic. Okay, well you've given that a nice coat of white to obviously cover up all of the impasto and the rocks that you had there. Um, what do we do now? Okay, so now I'm going to do a tonal underpainting in gold, rose gold and copper, and then I'm going to glaze over the top of it. So I'm going to just start going over this textures. And these are the metallic colours? With the metallic. Yeah. And then I'm going to put red over the top of it and it's going to make an orange that glows. Where it's darker, I'm going to use a little bit of copper. So tell me a little bit more about Uluru and working out there as a resident artist and then being with the Aboriginal community and the landscape of Australia. Working at Uluru has been fantastic for me. The great thing about the residency program is when I go there, you actually get to immerse yourself in the landscape and the culture, work with the people and you experience the landscape and then you come into the studio and paint it. So it gives you this all-round connectedness to the landscape and the people. And you've been doing uh, the Uluru contract for about five years now? Yeah, I've been going up every year for about five years. Yeah. And I stay a month at a time and I work every day while I'm up there. And then I've also been privileged enough to go out and work in some of the um, Indigenous communities with some of the Indigenous people at Murujulu. And I think that you've probably also met a, r a real diversity of cultures from people from all over the world coming in to see your work, but not only come and see Katajuta as well. Oh yeah, that's one of the best things, Graham, about working there is you get to meet people from all over the world. So when you sell work, it goes everywhere. Mm. And you get feedback from people about all different kinds of art. But they re people who come really relate to the colour mm. that I use and, you know, it, it provokes in them a sort of an emotional response to the response they have when they first see Uluru or Katajuta. And it's an amazing red colour, it's these amazing big rocks. I'm going to use a transparent glaze of reds and oranges over the top of this metallic painting. So if I add the orange to this acrylic painting medium, you can see it's a little bit milky, but it's going to dry totally transparent. Now the best glow that I use is either cadmium red or a lizard and crimson mixed together with a little bit of the acrylic painting medium. And when I put that over the gold, it'll dry to a really transparent glowing orange. I want it to dribble. And the reason I'm using the acrylic painting medium is because it's a thin viscosity binder that glues the paint to the canvas. So this is cadmium orange that I'm using. Really transparent glaze. Very, very watery. So the aim is to leave 
a little bit of that metallic shining through, but not too much of it. So this is very similar to glazing that you would use in watercolour. It's definitely got that watercolour technique to it, doesn't it? It does. This is running beautifully here. I'm going to add in some blues and some turquoise. Yeah. And I'm using a little bit thicker paint here. And you can see how it's starting to run over that structure that I've created. So when you mix blue and orange together, you end up with a kind of grey colour. So rather than mixing them on the palette, I'm putting them directly onto the canvas and I'm allowing the colours to mix as it goes. I'm not trying to paint a realist painting. What I'm trying to do is capture people's emotive response to the landscape. And each layer that I'm putting on here is adding to the three-dimensional effect and creating the illusion that the gorge is rounded. Mm -hmm. To create a glaze, I'm going to add some acrylic painting medium. And you're just using uh, wax paper? This is um, baking paper, baking paper, which is, is fantastic. It? I use this as a Tremendous. palette the whole time. So what I want is a transparent glaze over the top mm -hmm. and I want it to stick to the painting. And let's get glazing. So a bit like a watercolour, what I'm going to do is basically just run the put my brush there and because I've already created this structure yeah. the paint will run and follow the little the patterns that I've created underneath the wow. textures fascinating process so much fun yeah and I can see obviously with the uh, residency that you have out at Uluru the reason they keep, keep asking you to come back is that uh, you're so good at entertaining people with these with these uh, methods as well oh yeah people love to see it yeah they don't always understand where I'm going with my work yeah. <laughs> until they see the finished product. Makes sense in the end. But it makes sense in the end. So what I'm doing now is just putting in these darker tones yeah. and letting it run. I think one of the most important things about art is just, it really is just play and having fun. Yeah. Okay, so I might put a little bit of this aqua in there. You can see I'm using thicker paints in some areas. And then using my bottle with the um, acrylic painting medium in, sometimes I can just run a bit across. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, pretty amazing. And then that dilutes it further. The thicker parts then sort of bleed out a more. Yes, so yes. it just, it's quite an exciting process. It's a fascinating effect, it really is. Mm. So I am not just doing this randomly. I am actually looking at my reference photo and following a plan. And these colors look fairly fluorescent at the moment, but when they dry, they do dull down a bit because they're mixing with the orange that's underneath. Mm -hmm. So where would you say is probably the most picturesque place that you've been to? Oh, I'm really biased. Having lived in WA, yeah. the Pilbara is my favorite. It's a definite on your bucket list kind of place to go. Right? One of the things about the Pilbara is it actually predates fossil history. Mm. So some of the oldest rocks in Australia. Goes way back. Just like a Larue is as well. Yeah. Yeah, we do. And Greenland and Australia actually have the oldest rocks in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I love rocks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hence all the rock yeah. paintings. Okay, I think I'm going to leave this at this. Okay. Let it dry because yeah. now it's way too wet. And then I'll look later and see how it's going continuity wise. All right, we'll let that dry and we'll come back later on. Yep. Okay. So you can see this is dried darker. That's just the way the paint dries. The mixture of the orange and the aqua has muted back to form more of a brown colour. So the next thing I'm going to do is underpaint the water using the same colours that I've used in the cliff face already. And you can see the effect is very similar to watercolour. Okay, so now it's time to paint in the foliage so I need a different palette. The palettes that I use are these plastic containers and you can see I've got a wet towel 
in the bottom of it and then a piece of glad bake and the beauty of these pallets is when I'm finished using them I just pop the lid on them and they'll stay out fresh that paint won't dry out and I can leave that in there for up to a month even when I'm painting in Outback Australia so I'm going to start by using a dark colour to block in my foliage and I'm just going to paint this really rough really loose because I'm just really blocking in a colour. The main thing is just getting these darks into place. And the same here. You can see that the brush is starting to create the effects of those grasses without me having to do much. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is come in with the sponge and start putting the highlights in over the top. And obviously still trying to form the, the light and the shade that you'd see on a bush because of the light in there. In the valley there. That's right, Graham. Underpainting the reeds, I'm using lots of different colours. And it really does give the impression of um, sp uh, spinifex or tussock grass. Yeah, it's yeah. quite amazing, isn't it? Okay, there's a really strong value on the edge of this water, so I'm mm -hmm. going to go over the orange. All right, the Professor of Paint. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Grace. Linda McCauley, thanks so much for having us in your studio. Wonderful piece of work. And as I said, you can see the reflections going through when the, when the light changes on these paintings in the afternoons, in the mornings. Absolutely fabulous. I mean, they really do change mood, don't they? Yeah, just like the sunrise and sunset over Catajuda. It's fantastic stuff. Now, also, you have open studios throughout the whole of this area, don't you? Yes, so anyone who wants to come and visit me can come and visit me in my studio and there's 34 other fantastic studios open mm -hmm. every May and November in the Shire of Nillambic. Fantastic stuff. Uh, also, uh, your website as well? Yes, lindamacaulay.com.au So if anybody wants to know about the open studios or even to come and see, I mean it's okay people drop in and see you anyway, isn't it? That's right. Absolutely, that's fantastic. Also, obviously, colourinyourlife.com.au Come in, have a look at what we're doing. Uh, Facebook page, Colour in Your Life. Always got some great people in there and there's thousands and thousands of people in these days doing what they're doing. Uh, we're going to head off again. Fantastic day. Thank you, Graham. It's been, been a wonderful. pleasure. Absolutely. And always, guys, remember, make sure you put some colour in your life. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>